Still haven't set, uh, smoked a cigarette in about like three days now. Making the switch. Better than nothing. Making a step in the right direction. Remember, don't beat yourself up. Just try to make a step in the right direction. If you can, if you can't, just keep it in mind. Know that you should at some point slowly work towards it, but do not beat yourself up. So, um, you probably, probably saw my cut test video this morning. If you didn't, go back and watch it because uh, it was absolutely nuts. Uh, it was so much fun. I did a cut test with my new Spyderco Delica with the uh, Warncliffe blade and the K390. This stuff is killer, dude. Absolutely destroyed the cut tests. Um, possibly the the sliciest, best uh, knife I've ever tested, uh, quite possibly, if not uh, very, very close. Um, the Manix 215V did very well. Um, the Vosti Nightshade did very well. Uh, what else did really well? A lot of knives did really well, but this honestly surpassed them. Um, this K390 is bonkers. I did all my testing. I even cut more rope than I usually do. Um, and at the end of all the testing, when I go to slice the paper, it sliced cleanly through the paper without snagging. The edge retention on this stuff is amazing. It has a bitey edge left. I don't think I've ever, besides the 15V, I don't think I've ever felt an edge that stayed bitey um, after all those tests that I do. Um, it's crazy and this blade shape is amazing so i kind of fell in love with spider co's warren cliffs uh recently when i got this pm2 warren cliff um spider co just has a really interesting kind of a uh, very aggressive warren cliff uh, blade since it's kind of a leaf shape warren cliff um it just it gets it's kind of wide up here and comes down to a thin point and I think that helps it, you know, stay th nice and thin and slicey because we have a full flat grind up here, uh, well, the whole way. But it starts up, here, starts back here where there's a lot of space for the flat grind to come down to the edge. Um, it's just, it's an amazing blade shape. Um, here I can show you uh, both of them together. Um, so very similar, just the, the Delica is a, a little bit smaller. Um, it's an amazing blade, man. It really, really is. Absolutely utility cutting destroyer. Um, this tip is so thin and precise and you can get your, your pointer finger almost, almost all the way to the tip. So you could just get a lot of pressure into the tip and man, if I'm doing like any kind of detail work down on a surface, cutting out, uh, cutting out leather, cutting out really anything, um, this is going to be my go-to because I don't think I have a knife with this uh, aggressive of a Warncliffe with that thin of a tip. Possibly the Finch Holiday. That's also another very thin one, but this is uh, so, so good, man. Um, ergonomics is kind of funny. I mentioned it in the cut test video, but I do feel the clip, and that might change once I put a deep carry clip on it. Um, that kind of happens with some spider coats. Um, Here's an example of a deep carry clip. This is my Spider Coast Salt. But it actually kind of ends up moving the clip back this way a bit, um, which kind of takes this lip and moves it back, which might be out of your way um, as far as creating a hot spot. So we'll see. I do plan on putting a deep carry clip on this. Um, but I was not even having to grip the knife that hard pushing through material because it was so slicey. So I was never really like rah, pushing through like I do on most of the cut tests. Most of the cut tests, especially with the rope, I'm, I'm gripping it so hard. I'm like, ah, trying to get it to cut through. This, I didn't even have to try. I just, psh, easy. So I was not gripping the knife hard. So therefore it was not a hot spot. Very, uh, very cool. Now, uh, a couple little comparisons between the um, Native 5 and the Delica here. I love the Native 5. I'm really starting to fall in love with these Spyderco uh, back locks. This was my first one. It's just so satisfying to click that open. I love letting it fall and just hearing that nice snap shut. Um, 
this one I think is still breaking in. It doesn't quite fall when I push the back lock. I have to kind of flick it a little bit. Um, but man, it's just satisfying. Uh, I like the color. I wish they matched. I, I really like this green. I wish it was kind of a green. But the green is the Salt Series color, so. Um, I believe this kind of like teal is uh, the K390 color. I believe um, most Spydercos in K390 have the same color. Um, and man, it, it really makes me want the Warncliffe and Della, which is, I think, basically this, but just a little bit larger. Um, such a good knife, dude. And such a good price for for the amazing steel you're getting. Uh, I think I paid like $120, $130. Um, it's, it's crazy. Um, I think I'm going to edit in a photo right now. I found a really good chart of blade steels. And uh, it's from Knife Steel Nerds, so it's, you know, it's reliable and accurate. Um, and it ranks uh, the three main attributes of steels, um, toughness, corrosion resistance, and edge retention. And it ranks them in a scale from 1 to 10. And you can see on that uh, graph where K390 uh, is. And this is assuming that all these steels have been heat treated to uh, their, their recommended HRC. So... Um, you'll see how it rates. It rates very well. Uh, it's not that corrosion resistant, so this will patina and rust. Um, if You can avoid that if you just oil it, but I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what type of patina develops on this, so I'm not going to be uh, trying to prevent the, uh, the patina happening. Um, very high edge retention and um, lower toughness, but very high edge retention. Very high. And that chart is just really, really useful in general. Uh, if you message me on Instagram, I will send you a photo of them. There's one chart for stainless steels and another separate chart for uh, non-stainless or some mostly tool steels. Um, it's amazing stuff. I really recommend this knife. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't call it a hard use knife. Um, although in my testing, you know, cutting rope, strap, cardboard, piece of cake. Um, but it is very thin blade stock which uh, you know, adds to the sliciness, but also takes away from the overall toughness. Um, you know, I, w I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't take this as a, like a bush crafting knife or anything like that. Um, there you can see a uh, blade stock comparison between the PM2 and the Delica, and then here's the Native 5 and Delica. Still quite a bit thinner. Um, I think you would be hard pressed to find a better day-to-day -day EDC knife. I really, I cannot think of one that's better than this. Maybe aesthetically better, you know? Um, although I think this looks wicked. Um, but functionally, I don't think so, man. Let me know in the comments if you could think of one. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. So full review coming soon, but I was just so excited about this knife that I had to, uh, I had to kind of do another little video on it. It's amazing. Um, you know, I guess I can get all three. Can I get all three? Yeah. That's how Advanced Knife Bro does it. Actually, he can, he can do three at a time. Let me see if I can do that. There we go. <laughs> what do you think about that, Advanced Knife Bro? Thanks for watching, dudes. I will see you later. Adios.